All right, so we are now on exercise five where we're asked to show the descriptive statistics. So when you say descriptive statistics, actually this is to describe the data and we are not going beyond the data. So there are actually two main or two types of statistics. One is descriptive statistics and the other one is the inferential statistics. OK, when I say descriptive statistics, actually, usually we look at the mean median mode and the measures of variation such as the uh, range, the maximum, minimum, the variance, standard deviation. We also include interquartile range, Q1, the first quartile, and the third quartile. And also skewness is included when we talk about descriptive statistics. Okay? So, how are we going to do this? Basically, when we uh, show the descriptive statistics in MS Excel, we need to put all the numbers in one column or all the numbers in one row, okay? Because if you have numbers like this, for example, in different columns, we will not be able to properly display the descriptive statistics. So we have to put all the numbers in one column. So the first thing you're going to do is, of course, to look at the data, if you have the data analysis or not. In my MS Excel, I have already. If you don't have, what you're supposed to do is to click on File and Options and click Add-ins. And here, Excel add-ins, you have to click go, and all of these you have to tick. Right, and then OK. So when you click on data, you're going to see solver as well as data analysis. Right, so we are now ready to display our descriptive statistics of this particular data. OK, so click on data, data analysis. And here find the words descriptive statistics and click OK. Right. The input range is our data. Our data here has no title, so we just select the entire data until nine. So we don't need to take the labels in first row because we don't have the title actually. In the output range, you have to take this and put the cursor here and select the cell where you're going to put the statistics or descriptive statistics. Okay, click OK. All right, sometimes this message, you know, appear, you have to click you have to take this one. Okay. And summary of statistics. All right. So we have here our values. So we have the mean, we have the median, the mode, standard deviation, the variance, skewness, kurtosis range, minimum, maximum, sum, and the count. Okay. This one we don't need to interpret as one, this one. Okay, so if you're going to select all in all, we have 39 numbers, so it's correct. And the mean is 7.8. If you're going to select this, for example, until the last, you're going to see that the mean the mean is or the average is 7.87, which is correct. So this is how to display all the measures of descriptive statistics in seconds. So we don't need to solve separately. So it saves a lot of time 
actually. Okay. So last time we are done with six and seven. Five, I did already just now. Okay. Number four, actually, uh, you have to find the fx, x squared, fx squared, and cf. So to find the fx, you have to multiply the frequency and the midpoint or the x. So x here is also called as the midpoint. So these are the formulas. This is the midpoint, or we call this as the mid interval. Our fx is equal to the frequency times our x. Okay, drag it down. So basically, we just have to multiply our frequency and our x or midpoint, select the answer and drag it down. X squared, this is equal to the X, shift 6, 2. And drag it down. FX squared, this is equal to the frequency, multiply the X squared. So please take note that you are not supposed to square this. You have to multiply the frequency, that is the F, and the X squared and drag it down. For the CF, the first CF is equal to the first frequency. Second one equals the left plus above. And select the second value and drag it down. You are not supposed to select 11. You have to select the second value. So let, let's do this again. Equals frequency the first, then equals the left plus above. Select the second value and drag it down. Now let's get the sum here. Equals, you can click also auto sum directly two times and enter and drag this value to the right to get all the totals. So again, you can just key in equals. You can also use equal sum and select the values. Or equals and double click auto sum to get the value automatically and select the value, drag it to the right. So what we need is the sum of the frequency, the sum of fx, and the sum of fx squared. Okay. All right, so let's now calculate our mean. The formula is here. That is equal to the total of fx divide the total of frequency. And here two decimal places. So we have to decrease. This is increase. This one is decrease. The variance actually is the expression inside the square root, this one, inside. So that is equal to the total of fx squared, sigma fx squared over the total of the frequency minus the x bar squared is the mean squared. So x bar here is the mean. Select the mean and shift 6 to this is the value. And two decimal places. To get the standard deviation, we have equals square root of the variance because we have the square root here. So this is our standard deviation. Then we get the mean minus SD, so equals the mean minus standard deviation. And here we have the mean plus the standard deviation. Right, so let's now interpret our standard deviation. We're going to start with the words, the large proportion. of employees tardiness
fluttered around 12.58 minutes from the mean. That's between 6.59 minutes and 31.76 minutes. So for you to interpret properly, you have to look at the information above here. This data is about tardiness in minutes. When you say tardiness, the number of minutes the employees are late. Okay, so these are the employees of this company, LPQ Limited, as per the attendance records in, in one month, month of August. Okay. So this is approximately, so we can write it here, approximately 68%. Okay, so approximately 68% of these employees are between this. They're late between like seven minutes to 32 minutes. So we can see it here. Yeah, so seven minutes to 32 minutes from here to this interval here. So many employees there. We have 11, 10, 5, and 3. So it is correct. 7 is here or 5 point something or 6.59 it is here until 31.76 until here so most of the employees are there that's why we say the large proportion you can also search about this this one is fixed actually we can go to empirical rule Stats images. Yeah, we call this as empirical rule. As you can see here, 68% uh, that is the mean. Zero here is the mean. Okay, because actually we can convert the mean and other values to zero up to negative three point something and zero until three point something. So the mean actually is here. So the mean minus STDEF, that is mean minus one standard deviation, that is to the left. And the other one is the mean plus one standard deviation, you can see here. So that is 68% of the data, right? So let's just, write our values. In our calculation, the one on the left is 6.59 minutes. That is mean minus SD, and this is the other one, 31.76. Here, so the employees, 68% approximately of them are having tardiness from 6.59 minutes to 31.76 minutes. Okay, and the mean is here, zero. Okay, so our mean is 19.17 and mean minus one. Actually, there is one here, but we don't need to put one, it's understood. Okay, this is mean minus one standard deviation. Okay, so we have 19.17. So this point here, the zero is 19.17 minutes. So that's the meaning of that. That's why I mentioned here 68% approximately. Okay, so I have done exercise five and exercise four, actually, and six and seven, I did this one before and I sent the video already. Also, I might be asking about the CV. 
which is the coefficient of variation. All right. So this is actually standard deviation over the mean. This is the formula. So our CV equals here standard deviation over our mean. This is the mean. And click percent. Okay. So the CV should be expressed in percentage. So we can write our comment here. The standard deviation is 65.64% of the mean. Still, we can consider this as moderate. Okay, not that large. So it means the scores are not very far from each other and the scores are not very, very far from the mean. So moderate variation. Okay. Here you can see how to interpret. Okay. So within this range, we can see moderate. All right, so I'm going to continue with other exercises later, like three, two, and one. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, bye-bye.